Welcome back everyone, it is time to go balls in deep on a random Wednesday, which can only mean one thing. It is time for some One Punch! Opera in that one. Anyway, whilst the One Punch Man community expected a chapter release today, there's one thing they didn't expect. The contents of this chapter, because what in the Moomin Rider bicycle throw attack is this? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Saitama versus God? It's here! What did he say? <laughs> Like, I'm not even kidding. God has shown himself in Garo's character, completely changing One Punch Man forever, diverting from the webcomic. Saitama has noticed God and vice versa, and their inevitable battle has begun. Fans have reacted to these events like this. Or like this. And I don't really need to tell you guys what camp I sit in because you've got the notification bell on and watched our previous videos discussing Saitama vs God. But in case you're wondering, I'm pretty damn excited. Every bit of analysis, every clue, every piece of foreshadowing that we discussed with Zoning has been confirmed and proven correct, which makes it even more important to our community that they watch these videos. Otherwise, we're not gonna be on the same page and you're gonna be left behind not knowing what is happening in One Punch Man. And I mean, you don't want to be left behind, do you? <laughs> One Punch Man Chapter 164 has been updated. We uploaded a video explaining everything about the chapter in detail and fortunately, almost all all of it still stands true. Essentially, the events have been restructured to occur at a later date. The first version of chapter 164 ended with this absolutely hilarious panel. <laughs> Everyone was super excited to see where exactly this conversation would go. We knew that it was going to be comedic because this is One Punch Man and that it would also have a big impact on Garo because in reality, he's a big softy. <laughs> Okay, so first, let's talk about Garrow's resolve. Throughout the series, we've seen him go out of his way to do things that don't really fall in line with his philosophy of becoming absolute evil. For example, he saved Tario on multiple occasions, such as the time he was in the shack and the Hero Association caught up to him. He even fought the Monster Association later to save Tario. Also, he didn't kill Metal Bat, even though he had the chance to do so simply because it didn't feel fair to attack someone who's already unconscious due to injuries from the previous battle. Garrow also saved multiple people by mistake during his fight against Saitama 2, and this time he was thanked for it, even though he was in his monster form. He has had this resolve since childhood, a dream that he could achieve due to his indomitable will and his fists that are rated E for everyone. Garrow thought that society society judged monsters too quickly, but this was all shattered once he faced Saitama. Being thanked in his monster form stuck with it, and he even said how it's pathetic how something so small can strongly affect his resolve. He wanted humanity to suffer the same pain and despair that he did as a child, that way they could understand and self-reflect on their wicked ways of self-importance, self-centeredness and naivety on what others suffer from. He became evil to unite humankind so that humans and monsters can finally put aside their differences. Because if one does not experience pain similar to someone else, then they will never understand. Therefore, by inflicting the same pain on others that was inflicted on him, he hoped for people to soon understand each other because they would empathise with each other and that would bring about peace. So hearing people thank him, even though every bit of his body looks like some kind of monster, awakened hope inside of Garrow's mind. Questions such as, do I really need to be a god level threat? Do I need to sacrifice myself for the world? Is there any other way to break this conflict? This again shows how Saitama asking Garrow if he wants to talk things out was important, as Garrow has been through a lot. 
and knowing that the person asking him to talk about it is stronger than him, then there's a chance that Garrow finds a new answer. In fact, the conversation that the two looked as though they were gonna have in the previous version of this chapter will likely still come, but at a later date due to how detrimental it is to round off Garrow's character arc. Chapter 164 this time makes it even more clear that Blast and his team are linked to God and that they intend to stop him from being released. They are in another dimension where this space looks a lot like God's service. Garrow goes on to confirm that Saitama must be the one that faces God, as he believed his fists were the ones that turned against him. The next important change comes after Saitama lands his consecutive punches. Garrow calls Saitama the embodiment of unfairness. Now whilst this may just sound like a bad ass title, there's clearly a deeper meaning behind it. Remember, Garrow's aim is to make sure that everybody is treated fairly. However, he fights against the concentration of power, which is, well, pretty unfair. And that's literally what Saitama is. Hence, calling Saitama the embodiment of unfairness, essentially meaning that Saitama is limitless and goes against his ideology, makes him his biggest enemy. In conclusion, no matter what Garrow believes in, Garrow believes that he can't and lose to Saitama. However, as we all know, resistance is futile. Saitama is too strong and lands another normal punch, causing Garrow's monster form to completely fall away. Going through this, Garrow talks to himself, accepting his defeat. He was extremely dissatisfied and frustrated as even though he made it so far, for which he even defeated his master, all of it came crashing down because someone was simply unbeatable. This is a huge deviation from the webcomic, because in that version Saitama faces all forms of Garrow for much longer, as Garrow believes he is evolving each time. But Saitama makes him realise that he's actually growing weaker, and he was performing better when he was more human. And since Garrow has an ideal of what a true hero is, it shows that he is actually a good person all along, and he's convinced himself to believe in a false pretense of evil being the right choice. Instead, the manga has made it clear that Garrow hates to give up, but everything he did was in vain, because no matter when he took his final steps, no matter how much he trained, he still would have lost. This gave Murata and One an opportunity to expand the arc by including some more God, as the story has built his character up much more, therefore he entices Garrow with more power just like he did the others. Throughout this arc, we've witnessed countless people push into a corner. A select few of those people had certain visions. These visions brought them closer to their loved ones or someone that they looked up to. Through their words and powers, they stood up once again stronger than ever. This god blessed Homeless Emperor, who was a normal person, into becoming a dragon level threat. It blessed Psychos too, to the point where she eventually believed that humans were destined for this annihilation all along and became enlightened. Trust me, okay, just watch our God series, all right? It's gonna make perfect sense if you just do it and it's gonna blow your mind, it's great. We see how God speaks to Garrow. He says to him, I can hear you. Confirming what we've been saying, that God has been watching over the entire conflict going on between Garrow and Saitama. Whilst God reaches out to Garrow, the sky goes pitch black as all of the clouds in the area swirl and spiral together to create one huge storm cloud. From here, the colossal titan makes his dramatic entrance as we see God's massive crusty ass toes make a beeline towards Garrow. He tells him how your deepest wish is now on the verge of falling apart in futility at the hands of a single hero. Garrow, clearly losing consciousness, tells God to shut his mouth if he doesn't want to be killed. But God, confident in his power of manipulation, continues, telling Garrow that there is only one one fist that can counter the fist that has turned against God. Confused and bewildered, Garrow asks what he means, and who the hell this voice belongs to, which is when we see none other than Bang telling Garrow that he's trying to help him out, as there is no master who will just sit back and watch as their student gets beaten. Remember that God also made a failed attempt to lure in Tatsumaki using Blast, and whilst he failed back then, 
again, he didn't this time, as Bang asked Garrow, Give them to me, your balls. <laughs> Whoa, 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 whoa. <clears throat> what he really said is, Come. What did he say? Hey! Oh. What's actually important about all of this is that it further proves that God can see into someone's desires and vulnerability, that he was witnessing the fight and, more specifically, Garrow from the very beginning. Because we can say that this is out of character for Garrow, as he is the type of person that would never ask help from anyone and believes in his own strength, even in the recent chapters he was against the idea of Metal Bat helping him, but you could argue that Bang does bring back his humanity from being a monster ever so slightly. But the Garrow we knew believed in his own ideology of self-independence to obtain his goal of becoming the absolute evil. He wouldn't want anyone else helping him achieve his dream, as no one ever helped him since childhood after being bullied. He believes in his self-discipline, that's why he beat up everyone in the dojo to show his superiority. Anyway, it's clear that Saitama, the embodiment of unfairness as he puts it, has pushed Garrow over the edge. Obviously, it's a trap. A bang has already been defeated, however in times of desperation there's only ever one person that Garrow could ever ask for help from, and that is his master. This vision is also a great showing of Bang, unlike the fake Blast who was out of character, which Tatsumaki was swiftly able to identify. Moreover, there's a good chance that if God had used this fake vision before or after, it simply wouldn't have worked. Either Garrow's instincts would have prevented him from falling into this trap, or he would have completely lost his will to fight, hence leaving him with no reason to really take God's powers. But alas, Garrow accepts God's offer, as we see him peering down from above the clouds in the pitch black sky. All of this was beautifully executed in the chapter, and all of the redraws in the chapter make this moment possible. First, we get a look into Garrow's thoughts on pages 7 to 8. Then, Garrow's whole monologue is changed after getting hit by consecutive normal punches, with its conclusion on page 27 establishing Garrow's resolve as he says, There's no way! I'll let myself lose to him instead of is this how I wanted to die all along? If Murata was to simply just add the newer pages without making any changes in these sections then Garrow's acceptance of God's powers wouldn't be as meaningful or significant. In fact it just wouldn't make any sense. Now we see a Garrow who has been defeated but he is deeply dissatisfied and frustrated. He isn't simply accepting defeat, he still doesn't want everything to end here. Unlike in the previous version of the chapter where Garrow even asked Saitama why he hasn't dealt the final blow yet. Saitama then says that something is coming, meaning that Garrow has evolved into something completely different. Before, Saitama still referred to Garrow as if he was human, but now, now he's far beyond that. He's no longer someone, but something. Garrow then slams down into the ground, paralleling Saitama's entrance in chapter 160. Saitama asks Garrow what's with the costume change again, and even has to take a double take just to check that it really is Garrow. You see, his physique may look the same as his god slayer fist form, except he doesn't have a face anymore. You see, this is this is actually awakened Garrow cosmic fear mode. If you take a closer look, you can actually see the space and cosmos on Garrow's body. Seriously, my man's turned into like Alien X from Ben 10 at this point. You can see spirals and stars and the whole galaxy and my guy Garrow just looks cool as fuck man. Anyway, confused, Saitama asks what's wrong to Garrow, who replies with a far weirder answer in this context. He simply replies that the fist that can counter the indomitable fist that has turned against God has to be the fist of God. Now whilst Saitama didn't understand a word Garrow just said, he did understand what Garrow sounds like. Like, from here, Garrow takes his stance, copying Bang's technique, ready to fight. Now, you probably don't need me to tell you this, however, I think it's safe to assume that Garrow is pretty goddamn strong right now. After all, we know that accepting power from God drastically increases one's threat level. Psychos became one of the most formidable foes in the entire series, and even some random nobody like Homeless Emperor was elevated to a dragon level threat with God's power. 
So if we take someone like Garo, a god level threat, on the level of someone like Boros, that is powerful enough to change the entire shape of the planet and distort the planet's magnetic and gravitational field, thus creating a spatial distortion, and then add God's godly boost and power on top of that, yeah, we can safely assume that Garo is on the verge of becoming the strongest foe Saitama has ever faced. All right, all right, anyway, listen, guys, don't make me plug the God series again, okay? I'm just gonna put it here. It's up to you to watch it. Watch it. But I'm not gonna force you. I am forcing you.